Welcome to the Insightful Professor. In an earlier video on the topic of input validation, we showed how a try-catch construct could be used within a loop to ensure that program execution would not continue beyond the try-catch until we were certain that we had valid data. We used a do-while loop which ensured that the instructions in the loop body would be executed at least one time. In this video, we're going to move forward, review some of that information from the previous video, and then add some new stuff. The topic here is to control the overall flow of execution of the application by using a nested loop structure. In our programs, we used a post-test loop to perform data validation. This is a do-while structure. Here, what we see is that the instructions in the loop body will be executed at least one time. Because we conduct the test after executing the loop body, we refer to this as a post-test loop. If the test evaluates the true, we re-enter the loop body and go through this process again. When the test evaluates to false, we do not re-enter the loop body, but we continue on to the next instruction that follows the do-while control structure. So the test involves checking the value of a variable. The variable is initialized prior to entering the loop body. The value of the variable could be changed within the loop body prior to the next test. This is what gives the opportunity for this whole loop structure to terminate and for the program to advance into the next set of instructions for execution. The programs that we used in our examples also contained a second loop. This loop was used to process the data contained within a file. This was a while loop. Notice that this is a pretest because we're performing the test prior to entering the loop body. The consequence here is that the loop body might never be executed. If the test evaluates to false, then we skip the loop body, don't execute it at all. But if it's true, we enter the loop body, execute the instructions, and then do the test again. Because we perform the test prior to executing the body, this is referred to as a pretest. In our examples, the test involved ensuring that there was data to be processed within the file that we opened. The instructions executed in the body might cause this situation to change. For example, if we read the last record, then when we do the test, next time there will be no more data to process. The test will evaluate to false and we will not enter the loop body again. Keep in mind that eventually the test should fail and the loop will end. This, of course, assumes that we've not coded an infinite loop. Now, in the programs that we examined, because the file could be empty, we did not want to execute the loop body unless we were assured that we had data. That is, we obtained a record from the file. Because of this, we chose to conduct the test before rather than after entering the loop body. That's the reason for the while loop and the pretest. Here we present the two approaches used in our example programs. On the left, we have the post-test loop implementing a do-while structure. And on the right, we have a pre-test loop implementing the while statement or while structure. Let's consider an additional modification to our program example. In file read demo 1, 2, and 3, we used the post-test loop, that is the do-while, to obtain from the user the name of the file to be processed. We wanted to ensure that the file existed before we attempted to process it. Therefore, we did not want execution to go beyond this point of data validation. 
Let's suppose that after processing the file, the user needed to process other files in the same way. Rather than having the user run the program again, we could use another loop within our program. Here's a question for you. Which style of loop should we use for that implementation? Well, because the user is running this program, we assume that they wish to process at least one file. After processing this file, we can then inquire of the user whether they wish to process another file. Thus, it would make sense to use a post test, a do while, to control the overall processing of the program. Let's look at the code to accomplish this. Here's the source code for File Read Demo 3. Let's run the program first before we discuss the changes that we'll make. We run it, we give it a name, and we give it a bad name. There's no such file. And it comes back file not found. So now we get a second try. And now we do sample input dot text, processes the data, and then it summarizes that. But suppose we have a second file to process. We've got to start all over and run the program again. So by adding the second loop, we're going to allow the program to continue executing until the user says, I'm completely done. I have no more files. Let's review some of the key areas that we've been discussing. We have a control variable called file not ready. This is initialized to true. We have the do while loop that we've been talking about that will prompt the user for the name of the file, attempt to open that file to verify that it exists, and if it fails in the open, the catch block will intercept the file not found exception and we'll go back and try it again. So we have a do while structure. Assuming that the file name is valid, and then we enter the second loop and continue to read and process the data from the file. Once we've exhausted all of the data in the file, we call the close method, close the file, and then simply put out a little summary of the overall processing, and that's the end of the program. So let's consider where we need to make our changes. first thing to realize is that all of the processing that's done here from the declaration of the variable that controls the do while all the way down until the end of the code effectively will become the body or the bulk of the body of another loop. And this will be a do while. Prior to entering our initial do while loop, we declared our variable and assigned an initial value. So we want to do the same thing for our new do while loop. Starting from line 18 down, we'll make this the body of a do while, but just before that, we'll declare another control variable. Let's look at the changes to the program, and we'll call this file read demo 4. So the first thing we did was to declare a new variable to control the second do while. I simply call this work to do, and again, initialize this as true. This will support the idea of multiple files being able to be processed within a single run of the program. Next, we see the do to introduce the outer loop. We examine the body of this loop. We see that it goes all the way to the bottom of the code. It includes all of the code from the previous version of the program, plus a few additional instructions we've added. We scroll up just a little bit. What we see is the program originally ended here. And what we've done is we've added additional instructions to prompt the user, get the user's response. The user is given one chance to enter their response. We've decided not to use a loop in this case. The Y is interpreted as, yes, I have another file. Any other value means I'm all done. We assign the result 
of comparing the response to a y. If it's equal to a y, the value of the variable retains the value of true, and we go back up and do it all over again. If the response is other than a y, the control variable assumes a value of false, and the program ends. Let's run the program and see how this works. So we'll start off, we'll give it a bad name as before. Okay. Now we'll say sample input.txt. And notice we get a prompt to try it again. So we respond with a lowercase y. And it prompts us for the name. So now I give it uh, empty.txt. Nothing was in it, but it prompts us again. So I give it uppercase y. And we give it another, another try, sample input.txt. And finally, I've had enough. I'm done. I give it something other than a y, and the program ends. So we've nested a loop within another loop. The bulk of the processing for the program is going to be repeated. So we make that the body of an outer loop. And it's the outer loop that gives the user the opportunity to go through the process again and again and again until they indicate they've had enough. And that's determined here by the user giving a response other than the positive yes or why, and then the program terminates. And that's the basic idea behind having a loop nested within another loop to control the overall processing of the program and allow a task to be executed multiple times during the execution of a single program.